on guys it's your boy sister here brings a video here today bring you guys a photoshop to get your own cool pixel banner design we're gonna go with the word effect here right um so we're gonna say pixel banner design effect right so as you can see right here today we're gonna do something like this which is pretty freaking cool we do make the text ourselves, but the background is just pretty much an effect if you guys do not know you can go to filter uh pixelate and i believe it's mosaic you use that filter to basically make it something of this right here of this like matter to have it look like it's you know pixelated and whatnot but the actual progression of it actually happened to be using stock photos right so we had like a step one here and then step two was kind of like adding some clouds in here to make more of a depth and then we had step three being like more making them very more like a lot more darker that way the colors are nice and vivid that when you do pixelate it doesn't look really weird or it doesn't look like it's like faded colors it looks like really nice vivid you know pixel you know actual if you know and in pixel art right you would go in and actually do each individual pixel um making the colors more vivid would make the actual pixel stand out a little bit more and so that way then you actually pixelate it and you get something like this so the text itself however yes we're gonna be doing that in photoshop which would be pretty like it's fairly simple honestly and uh overall the entire cost is pretty good pretty simple so we're just gonna go ahead and get this thing going right away guys we're gonna start off with the actual background and searching for our images and i already have my images of course but if you guys want to use the same ones that i'm using today's video uh just either remind me if i don't but i should put in the description uh in the description down below and I think that's it. So, of course, guys, 200 likes on the video equals a secret down below. And uh, as always, it's most likely to be the PSD of the video here today. And let's just get this uh, Let's just get this thing going. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get this thing going. So I'm going to go ahead and just hide this uh, little final result here. And we're going to get this thing going very, very simple. Like I said, it's very easy. But it's only easy if you kind of have the whole entire vision. I already had the vision. I thought of mountains. And then you got sky. And then you got some clouds. And then you got a nice little background. So basically, right, uh, I went ahead. And let me just show you guys just in case. Uh, I went ahead and made sure that I typed in some, I typed in mountains, right? I typed in mountains to get these nice cool images of mountains. And I'm going to tell you this right away. I think to make this even look as crisp or as close as it can be to the actual uh, style of pixel art, I would suggest you guys to change your tools, go to size, and then change your size from larger than, and then go anywhere between four megapixels and six megapixels, right? Right. We're in a dimension of 3000 by 1000, which is a Twitter header dimension. So if you guys were to change to like one of these right here, It'll give you guys the most crisp quality possible. That when you do apply the effect, the pixels aren't the pixels, excuse me, aren't too, I would say, separated or too spaced out. You know what I mean? So also, what might like work for you is using an image that has very, I guess, detailed. You can see two tones, right? Like for me, I would I would kind of suggest that it's two tones. So having a snow cap mountain is probably a pretty good idea. That's what I actually ended up picking, I believe. Um, so something like this might not work because there's a lot of white and there's not enough like. I guess separation between the pixels because we're not doing it by hand right we're just doing it with a simple effect which is just going to be like a how i'm calling this video is a, pic a pixel effect right it's not actual pixel art because pixel art is more of a style correct let me just make sure i get that out there more than once um so yeah like something like this might work it has multiple colors this would probably definitely work it has green you can see the grayish uh, face of the mountain that would work a lot better so just make sure you choose your colors that way the pixels have a time to sort of separate and then look really good and neat and all clumped up together or whatnot right so i'm gonna hide that really quickly i already have my picture for the mountains I'm just gonna drag that in here now for my picture i had a pretty good like i guess i would say ratio of uh let's make this a little more bigger so i can make it bigger because like, the rasterized image size is actually like 3000 by 3000 and so it's not going to lose any quality when i do this um hmm, maybe a little bit bigger so i can fit like right in the middle ish tone right somewhere like right there right i think that's pretty close to what i had it before all right, so right about there. So I took this uh, mountain little kind of, you know, snow cap because it had, I guess, color in the actual cap of, its, uh, of like the top of the cap itself. It had like little white spots, like just all over the place, which means my pixel spread is going to look really, really nice in my opinion, right? So I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to cut out this sky because I do have a sky image right over here. Uh, boom. <clears throat> So I believe I just typed in clouds, actually not sky. I typed in clouds and I found this and I was like, this would look super dope behind it. And that would give me some more color, kind of a color scheme to work with. Because this is the color scheme that I'm going to be using to actually move forward, right? So I'm going to go ahead and just also, I have a paper here. I want to make sure I have that in sight. Uh, let's just put it like right here. Boom. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and we're just going to rash this layer. Actually, yeah, we're going to rash this layer and we're going to put on a layer mask. Because we're going to cut out the background of the sky, uh, excuse me, of the sky in this uh, image here. So, if you guys don't know already, the magic wand tool should be everyone's friend now. For whatever reason, right? If you have something like my image here, which is kind of like 
I, you see, you can definitely see that it's a lot more blue than anything else in the actual sky. And so that means you're, let's just say that I put this to one or five or something like that, right? If yours is doing something like this, let me just let you know that this is pretty much normal, right? It's because your tolerance, you just saw me lower it. Some of you guys might have a tolerance of like 99, which might be too much. As you can see, it's selecting everything really, really close in the actual gray scale. For me, I think the sweet spot for me personally is 40, right? So I'm going to put it on 40. As you can see, when I click on the background now, you can see that you're actually selecting the two different tones of color. You're selecting the blue, you can select the uh, actual gray. There's way more ways to do this as well. But personally, I think this works probably best if you know how to use a tolerance. But if you guys just want to know for future reference, it's select color range and then you can choose a color, right? You can choose the blue and you can see everything gets selected besides, uh, oops, I should select it on the actual image, excuse me, not on the, uh, not on the little ma little mask. You can see this works well too. This works a lot better for like, I would say hair or something like that where you're cutting out hair. But just so you guys know, just so you, just in fact that you just at least have some kind of knowledge on it. But for me, I'm just going to use the simple magic wand tool, just like so. And have it on 40 tolerance. I can hold shift to select multiple different spots. If you guys don't already know, if you don't, do not already know, excuse me, you can press Q and then everything else that's red, basically everything that's red is not selected, right? That's what you want to make sure you can just see. Right now, as you can see, everything is very, very well selected on the outside, not the mountain. So if I press Q again, right? Hold shift while I have the magic wand tool. Let's select the actual little spots here, which happens to be the clouds right here as well, right here as well, right here. And like right there so perfectly if i press q you can see the only thing that's basically not selected is the actual mountain so this is pretty good we're just gonna hold and press q again we're gonna go on to the layer mask and press alt backspace which is basically a quick fill for the uh, black if you guys know black already fills out or excuse me it erases basically whatever's on that layer mask so if you would even want to take your brush take a black brush and you can just erase it like that as well um, but you can just quick fill, just like very simple off backspace because you're always going to have black and white as your colors no matter what. Um, so when you have actually click on this layer mask here, so if you look right here, we're on the layer mask, it's black and white. If I look, click over here, it changes the colors back to what your original color scheme actually happened to be. But for this, perfect. And we're going to go ahead and just take this <clears throat> image right here and we're going to turn it on and we're going to move it right in the back. Perfect. And there we go. Now I have our sky and a nice little, you know, kind of a mountainscape, right? So for me personally, I think this looks best just because you're kind of building a composition, right? I think I have the, uh, let's look at the word cloud. I believe I have a cloud texture. Where are you? Or like, let me see. I might have one here. All right, so I just really quickly got in this cloud. It was actually called smoke. Um, yeah, I got a nice little smoke texture now. So I'm gonna go, or not smoke texture, smoke PNG. Um, so basically I use this as a cloud, right? It's it's smoke. I got the, the stock by using or typing in the word smoke PNG. However, it definitely looks like a cloud to me. So I'm gonna use it as a cloud. So the reason why I chose a cloud is because I already had like a background. I felt like since mountains are very high, you can definitely see clouds and certain, you know, heights of mountains. Who the heck knows how high this mountain is? All we're really doing is focusing on the peak anyway, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and take my smoke smoke texture here and we're just gonna use this as a cloud texture just put it over here we're gonna put one like over here and we're gonna make a nice little smaller one and put it like so it's kind of behind the mountain away so it's a little further back so I want to make sure it kind of gets that vibe that it's you know smaller right so now we have this here basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna sort of do the kind of the text part but before we do that actually I believe I have to do the color scheme really quick so once I put this little uh, smoke texture in here I have my settings here so as you guys know I can have my exact settings of what I did before um, so we're gonna just go ahead and go to brightness and contrast I believe the settings for the brightness and contrast happen to be negative 39 and then positive contrast 33 not 330 there we go so there we have the contrast here like i said before in the beginning the reason why we did this is because we want to make our pixels as vibrant and as clean and as like you know you can see the colors very very vividly that way when you actually do the actual effect it'll look way better and you have like very nice compact nice tight pixels right so i'm gonna go ahead and do the next part which happens to be the curve uh we just did a very simple s curve very small very sleek S curve, just like so. As you can see, the S curve is just kind of bringing out our highlights and darkening out our darkers, uh, our darker colors, excuse me. And we had a color balance in here. It was a very, very minor change in color scheme. I love the background, how it looks right here. So I didn't change too much, but I just made my blue tones a little more kind of a purplish tone. So for this setting, actually happened to be, it was nine. Is that a one? That's definitely a one. Nine, one, 15. Right, so you can see it just kind of gets a nice little bluish, purplish tone. It looks really, really good in my opinion. So uh, after that, that was just very simple levels. Now the levels is kind of like a brightness and contrast as well for me. I feel like it's just something that's more controlled. You can control it very, very 
well in my opinion right so this kind of like moving out the left kind of works with the shadows moving out the right kind of works with the highlights and then moving the middle kind of just balances them both right so for me i had settings as 10 point 93 and then i had one no that's 241 241 perfect so that right there kind of made everything nice and dark and as you can see in my image it looks look how like very pixelated not pixelated excuse me look how very vibrant the actual clouds are the colors you can see every single color very very well and looks really really good so personally i think that's pretty dang good and also that's pretty much concludes the whole background portion of this banner here so for me this would combine everything together and this would be kind of the whole step one through two thing as you guys saw in the beginning right so step one through two is basically this i'm going to go ahead and just quickly show you guys how to do the text and i kind of i want to separate that just because it's a nice little kind of a different tutorial part right so let's go ahead and do the text part and just so you guys know already right make sure you go to file new you want to set it up as a 19 no well, let me just so just so you guys know right so it's gonna be 1920 by 1080 pixels right that's kind of the whole direction you want to get to at the end right so you're gonna just basically kind of like take away the zero so it's gonna be 19 oh my gosh right you would usually have 1920 by 1080 holy my like my brain just turned off anyway 920 by 1080 right you just take away the zeros and you have uh, 192 by 108 that's what you definitely want to have so right there take away the zeros and then press create and you're gonna have a nice smaller image and then i'm just gonna jump into the tutorial so that way you can see what we're gonna do and how we're gonna set it up and make the nice little pixel text that i have the word design right yeah so we'll do that all right let's right there there you go all right so see you guys in a second <laughs> all right homie so we are in our 19 or excuse me, not 19 20 by 1080 192 by 108 dimension here so basically i actually learned how to do this through flow tutorial if you guys don't know who flow actually happens to be uh julian is my how i call him how i address him i kind of he told me how to do it but basically it's very very simple actually so we're in this smaller canvas which means if you guys do not know by the way if you go to view show and then you show where is it called your pixel grid if you just throw that in there if i just make this let me make this a nice color like that right if you zoom in you see these pixel grids if you're someone who doesn't want the pixel grid to be shown you could basically just go and kind of redo what i just did view show and they can uncheck pixel grid personally i don't really find it like as soon as i figured i can turn it off i started just turning it off basically right so i just know that's it's it was always in my way when i was zooming in before tutorials stuff like that i don't know if the shortcut is for it but if you guys do know what it is let me know because i'm not personally i didn't google anything like that yet so uh yeah so i just wanted to really quickly take my rulers which is control r on your keyboard right you can take your ruler and find the middle and the horizontal line very simply by just sort of just hovering over where you think it is and you'll see a snap right so if i click Control r right you can see the rulers pop up click on the ruler part itself drag something over right and you'll feel like where the middle is kind of like right here right so if you just kind of figure it and kind of like let it go slowly around where that point is you'll see like a little snap right there that's kind of what you want to uh, have it at and that's the middle of horizontal lines or excuse me vertical wise and then you have the horizontal line is the same as that thing by just going up from the top so to set this thing up here we're gonna be using a brush right no we're gonna be using a pencil right so if i just zoom in really quickly <clears throat> we're gonna zoom in with a let's just zoom in just so you can see the difference just like so is it on brush it is so if you just kind of see how the brush works it's very very like loose the pixels are very very spread and it's not truly it kind of looks like you kind of like made something bigger and it's not actually supposed to do like do that right because of course a brush is still a brush and it still has you know pixels fading out smoothly that way it kind of gets that brush feel so what you're going to have to do is on your brush tool on itself it has a drop down called the pencil tool that's going to be using today's video so you use the pencil tool that way you can see i'm going to shrink this down a lot by the way if you don't know how to do this it's Control alt right click and then you can move your bounce left and right for that diameter and up and down for the actual hardness just so you guys know right so you can see this now and then you have a nice little pixel now you can use pixels you can make it a little more bigger you can get like a more of like a kind of like a cross almost like a healing kind of whatever you would call it right so you can do something like that and that's going to basically do how i'm going to actually trace out because i'm actually going to trace out a font and this is how kind of you can do it right so you can do it by freehand if you want to so you can just go be like you know design you can like that's a d and then e and try to make it nice and like you know not smooth so you can do something like that if you guys want to, or what you can do is you can do what I did, which I ended up just using. I used, what, what was it? It was Gothic Narrow, the font. Um, I believe the font family is called Gotham Family. If you guys want to check it out, I think it's like $5 or something like that. Unless you can find it somewhere for free. Um, I ended up paying for it though. I think it's G Feels Official uh, text. Anyway, what was I going to say? We're going to just type in the word design, right? Just like so. We're going to type in the word design in capitals because I like capital letters. Here we go. 
I'm gonna shrink it down to like my more of a bigger size, less lesser size, excuse me. And for me, I wanted to make sure that the letters themselves are actually a little more separated, correct? Right, so what I'm gonna go ahead and end up doing is making sure I go to my table here and have my, all right, it's already, already separated. So that's why it's already separated, but it's usually closer together like this, right? But I wanna make sure that my letters are very vividly red. So I did put my VGA split, which is basically like a splitter to like kind of separate your individual letters in a word, right? So if I just put in a 40, and press enter and that's kind of like splitting my letters a little bit just so i can trace a little more better also if you guys want to put, put this table up i believe you can just go to view uh excuse me windows character or right you can just highlight everything press Control a on your keyboard excuse me Control t on your keyboard it'll bring the actual table up so what i'm gonna do now i'm gonna make a new layer just lock this layer out if, if you ever want to do i kind of th i thought to lock it because i was an illustrator but it doesn't really matter it's just photoshop anyway we take our pen uh, our pencil right <laughs> and we're just gonna simply trace this I'm going to trace it just like so. I want to use a different color, actually. That way, I can actually see what the heck I'm doing. Let's just use like that, right? We're just going to trace this. Maybe a little bigger. All right, we're just going to trace this just like so. This is our D. This is our E. Now, the reason why we're tracing it, as you can see, when we did with the regular old text, correct? As you saw, it kind of has like these really weird faded pixels. And I don't actually want that. I think it looks kind of weird. So, I'm just going to go ahead and just kind of retrace it. And we're going to get something like that. And then we're going to get like an I here. <clears throat> then we're getting a G. Here we go. So the reason why I'm doing this over is kind of like to fine render it out kind of thing, right? That's the way I'm gonna, I'll, I'll explain it. And we'll just do something like this for the end. Kind of fill it in. As you can see, I'm just very, very loose. But we get a way, like, I guess you would say a, a better sharpness to it, right? A nice little pixelated look to it as well still and if you guys want to let's fill that in there maybe fill that in maybe here maybe like right there all right so i don't want to get too picky but this is a little too high so basically i'm gonna use my eraser and just so you guys know when using your eraser you want to change your mode from brush to pencil as well that way you actually get if you use brush it's just gonna it's gonna be a brush again you want to change it to pencil and also make sure to change it back when you actually end up using other things and erasing other things um so basically when you take your eraser just kind of erase things like that if you want to erase pixel by pixel you can still do that just shrink the actual eraser to one pixel and you can erase one pixel at a time and kind of fine-tune things um i want to kind of keep that i'll erase this maybe Right, come something like that maybe. That's fine actually. Maybe I erase this. Yeah, and then maybe erase that. Maybe erase that, and there we kind of go. It's kind of oh, there we go. Maybe erase that too. Maybe fill this in here. All right, I think I like that. <clears throat> so it's gonna look very weird. It's gonna look gonna kind of like Minecrafty, but that's kind of the point, right? Minecraft is pixels. So if you're gonna if you kind of get that vibe, then you're probably in the right direction. Actually, I don't like how this looks here. There we go. Maybe that's kind of okay. All right, now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say I'm done with that. So as you can see, the text looks pretty pretty uh, pretty good. Now there actually might be a font for this that kind of get it like this, but no matter what. If you even use a font in this sort of um, <clears throat> in this dimension that we're in, which is uh, 192 by 108, uh, you'll get these very, very like almost brush like pixels where the pixels are kind of like separating and like getting to a dimmer, dimmer point, right? Kind of like the opacity. That's why I did it again. That way it makes it more sharper. So the reason how I'm going to get my colors really quickly, let me just quickly do this. Control E to merge this group together. What I'm going to quickly do for myself is I'm going to drag this in here. Well, before I drag this, since this is smaller, it's a way, way smaller dimension. Shrink it in here first. That's why it's just a little bit easier. And then bring it in here. <clears throat> and you'll see when I press Control T, it'll be a little more smaller of a box. Otherwise, it'd be like super big and it'd zoom out for years. But what the reason why I did this is I want to find some colors in here and uh, use those as my kind of like the colors to use. So I'm going to move that over here because I want to use like these, like this background blue maybe and this pink over here maybe. And I'll just get rid of that really quickly. <clears throat> So we're going to go ahead and click on the actual one right here. We're going to go to color overlay. And I believe the color that I selected for, let me just quick, get a quick check in here. I believe I selected, so I selected like a uh, color down here. Uh, let's just actually figure it out from here. Let's just select this color here. And I'll select this color here. And I can get the blue pretty easily. So that's pretty much how we did it. We'll just do it like that. So you can use what I actually ended up doing was doing what I just showed you guys and select the color from here. But I'll just use the same exact ones just so I can get the nice little uh, color scheme that we had before. So what I'm gonna end up doing is changing my color overlay and we're gonna change the color overlay to this color right here. 
I'm gonna press okay, I'm gonna press okay again. And uh, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this blue, which is gonna be right over here now. I'm gonna select it again. <clears throat> Let's do this one, just like so. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just mm, hide this again, make a new layer, use my brush here, and click mask it that way of course whatever's on this layer that we're going to be doing on right now is only going to be right below it also if you did use color overlay if you guys i know already if you choose to like color over something like this that was right here you it's i'm on blue okay so if you if you see that you're not coloring over it's because you have color overlay on a clip mask layer so what you're gonna have to do is rasterize this layer out just like so then you'll be able to see the color so just in case you guys did not know that's what it's all about so rash is a layer first take your layer here and we'll just kind of go halfway, just like so, right? That'll be in the middle. And then for the top, we had a pink. So just, of course, make another new layer. Clip mask it as well. Take your pink and then go over the top, just like this. There we go. Now, to make it even better, to make it just look just that much better, as you can see, if I zoom in on this one right here, we have very little simple highlights, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make, of course, yet another new layer. And we're gonna do new layer here. Make sure it's clip masked. We're gonna basically select this blue here, whatever we have, and just move it up just a little bit to make it just a little bit more um, like lighter, right? So I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna just go ahead and do this. I can use a smaller one like that maybe, right? So just go in here, make some nice little highlights, get right there, just like so right here. And then you have to do another new layer make another mask right here and then we're gonna take this color here and we're gonna make it a little more vibrant so a little more lighter get it in there as well and kind of have like a, almost like a trident layer kind of look to it um trident gum right and we're gonna drag this down this time i think and we're just gonna pick take this darker color new layer clip mask don't forget to do that and go in here make it a little more darker Right, so this is kind of how I did like the text. Otherwise, it looks kind of boring when you put it in. But now this looks pretty dang cool, to be honest with you. And now I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna press Control G to group everything together. Right, so I'm gonna press Control J to make a duplicate of it, and I'm gonna press Control E on your keyboard to merge it all together. Or you can right-click Merge Group right here, just like so. Right, so you have one layer with everything in it. So I'm gonna end up doing is I'm move it down by simply holding Shift and move my. Uh, you can either hold Shift, or you can use your arrow keys if you guys want to. You can use your arrow keys pretty much. Press Control U on the keyboard on that duplicated layer that we actually merged together, which has one layer. Control U on your keyboard brings up the human situation table. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your lightness and you're gonna just drop this down to about negative 80. Um, and we're just gonna move our thing down just a little more. Right, so like if you have something like this right here, you see how you don't wanna have an empty space here? Move it just like one above or below or get to like this point right here where you can see a nice little, almost like a 3D look to it. All right, so that's pretty much the whole text part of this, actually. And we're gonna group this together and we're just gonna call this text, right? Now, just so you guys don't know, right? If we're gonna drag this in here and you were to drag this in here just like so, let's put our thing actually in here. And you're saying it's, it's way too small. You're gonna say it's way too small. You're gonna try to make it bigger, right? Just like so. And when you make it bigger, it's gonna get all blurry like that. And that's definitely not what you wanna have happen. And the way to only do this, fix this, just because it's a small, it's a very, very small, small document. It looks really good in here, but we need to make it bigger. So if you guys don't know how to do that, if you go to image, uh, if you go to image size and you change your resample here to, it's gonna be on automatic, I think on default, make sure you change it to where I had it before, which is nearest neighbor, hard edges, right? And you wanna go to width right here, which it's gonna have the width that you actually put in, which is 192 by 108. Basically put a zero right, uh, right after the uh, 192. Right, it's gonna change it to 120, excuse me, 1920 by 1080 pixels. You're gonna press OK. Right, it's gonna make the image size way bigger. It's gonna keep the same exact orientations of the, or not orientations, but the same, oh yeah, same exact orientations with the actual uh, pixels being hardened. It's kind of like making it bigger itself. We drag this in here now, and now we have a nice little text here that works very, very perfect, and it's the perfect size for us. Just like so. There we go. All right, cool. So basically now we're gonna have to, of course, do the whole pixelated for the background itself. So before I put that, I'll hide that for a second. What you wanna uh, basically do is press Control J to make a duplicate of this step one to two group layer that we did before. Press Control E to merge it all together. And we're gonna go ahead and go to filter. And this is the actual pixelated, uh, uh, the pixelated filter that we're gonna be using for the effect. It's pixelate and you wanna go to mosaic, excuse me. And I believe my cell range is about uh, 32. I think I had it on 32, but I put it on like 35. 
Actually, I'll put it on, I'll put it on 32. <laughs> um, basically, if you can just kind of like go through it really quick, if you put it on two cell size, it's going to kind of like just be a little bit of a kind of like a desaturation or distortion, excuse me. And if you put this more up, you can see the actual cell size just gets larger and larger and larger. But for me, the sweet spot for me happens to be just 32. You press OK. And then you have some nice little uh, nice little pixelated background now, right? I'm going to make this a little bigger because this line right here is kind of bothering me. I'm going to make it literally one pixel bigger. And then just arrow key down. There we go. Now you have that. That issue is now gone. We take our text, put our text in here as well. And here we go here. Just like so. And I'm going to just put the word pixel banner design we'll make this white and we'll make this color here this highlighted blue and we'll put that baby right there just so you have a nice little text just like so now that's that part right i do have a little bit of a few more color corrections to put in here also i actually put a cloud in the front as well so if i just take my smoke texture uh my smoke stock excuse me uh where are you smoke stock i can just take one from here honestly so what I ended up doing is I put another smoke texture here, like in the front of the end right there. Also put one like right up here, made it a little more smaller. And that way I just kind of have, I play with the depth of the actual banner design. So it looks like the actual text effect is behind or in front of the, uh, the clouds themselves. What I, what I had to actually do was though, is I had a color correction here, right? In the step one through two, I would have to take this color correction, drag this up, so duplicate it, right? Correct. And we're gonna just group these two uh, layers together. Excuse me, our two uh, added clouds together, right? And we're just gonna take this and clip and mask all these new or duplicated uh, color corrections on this as well. That way this color actually still matches the color that's also pixelated right in the background, right? So what I ended up doing was basically group it all together. Now we have our clouds. These are our extra, extra clouds. Duplicate it with Control J, Control E to merge together, just like so, the kind of routine thing. Filter, and you just go ahead and just, you can also just press Alt, Control, or excuse me, Control Alt F, which will automatically do the effect again, whatever you did lastly. And there we go. We have our clouds in the front now as well. Um, so this cloud right here is a little too close to this one here. Uh, I would have fixed that in post or afterwards or whatever, but it's all right for now. All right, so there's only two more things to do left, which happens to be two more color corrections. So the first one is vibrance. And right, you can see like it's kind of like kind of lame right now. That's also why my colors right here a little more, a little too vibrant. So I'm gonna have to like erase around the actual text itself. And for future reference, just know that you're gonna have to like choose a color scheme beforehand. That way you get a nice little look at the end, nice finish united look whatever right so we're gonna go to vibrance and my vibrant settings happen to be what is that a 15 that's a 15 dude for these uh vibrance and a 24 for the saturation so as you can see like right now my colors are a little bit too um saturated because i actually choose the colors with the color correction on when i did the uh when i choose my colors for the text or whatnot so i'm gonna take on i'm gonna click on the actual thumbnail of the vibrance here take a black brush and i'm immediately really quickly erase make sure you put it on brush this time remember that hardness zero and then get rid of that right there that way the color still matches the background and everything like that so as you can see if i just click uh, con uh click on this and turn it on and off you can see the colors look way more vibrant looks way more better looks more like you actually did the actual colors individually that's what you kind of want to have right we're, we're kind of emulating the pixelated uh the pixel art kind of like fandom the, not the fandom the the style itself right so we're trying to emulate that we have colors and we pick them and we actually chose them and like <clears throat> excuse me my voice just went um and then we you can see the different colors right that's what i'm trying to say if I like come on here right here, right? You can see that it kind of looks like we just did one color, lighter color, lighter color, lighter color, lighter color. If you didn't do that, it would look kind of dull and lame. As you can see, it kind of looks very lame and kind of dull, and we don't want that. So we want to make sure we try to emulate the look of the actual pixel art itself, and that's pretty dang good, honestly. And then after the vibrance was one very simple S curve, uh, just like so, and then just like so right there. And pretty much that is it that's all i basically did i'm going to group this together now i'm just going to call this the tutorial version that's control f control g is what i want and we're just going to call this tutorial so guys homies lovers get mm, let's not go there anyway so thank you guys so much for watching the video here today so pretty much in the video we taught you guys how to use the pixelate effect to make a nice little background like this complemented with an actual pixel art text which i learned by the way from flow which is really and like really dope individual flow what is this freaking channel flow tutorials something like that let me actually not flow tutorials it's definitely not what it is uh flow graphics i just want to make sure i get it right dude uh yeah it's flow graphics so if you guys want to, yeah the flow graphics is the channel name so right here right uh very cool individual that's how i learned it and i just kind of put my little twist on it and whatnot so it looks pretty dang good so you kind of combine actual pixel art 
with our fake uh, pixelate effects for the background, but you can't lie, the end of results is not that bad at all, honestly, right? So hopefully you guys did enjoy today's video here today. So don't forget, leave a like on the actual video for the 200 likes giveaway, of course. I call it a giveaway, secret download, whatever whatever you want to call it. But it's basically the PSD of the video here today. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so very much for watching again. And uh, what are we at? Like 75 point what, dude? What are we at? We are at 75 point seven nine one dude thank you guys so very much for subscribing all that cool stuff thank you guys so much for tuning in the live streams we have like we're holding a hundred viewers every single time now it's a little much but i'm dealing with it it's pretty cool i appreciate you guys very much i'm going to talk to you guys in the next one since hq out do not forget to keep smiling stay positive and stay freaking productive guys stay freaking productive guys later <laughs> all right